Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. Another big exciting day in my kitchen. You know that song, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. That's where we're hitting today, guys. So we're gonna hit some chestnuts. So a couple of neat little stories here. So when I grew up as a kid, we used to have chestnuts all the time. My mother used to make a, uh, a Thanksgiving uh, a stuffing or dressing with it, which was great. I can remember my grandmother making it for us just to chew on as a, as a nibble on Christmas Eve. So that's what I wanna show you today. I wanna show you that recipe. So after uh, I show you how to cook these, again, you can chop these up and use them uh, and add them to a lot of different dishes. So I'm gonna show you how we cook them in the Boreo family and certainly how Nona Boreo used to cook them uh, for us when we were kids, okay? All right, so first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to get some chestnuts. So here I got about a pound of chestnuts. A quick way to check to see if they're healthy. One you're gonna see here, see how they're nice and shiny? So you're gonna want them shiny and I already rinsed them off so I'd certainly encourage you to rinse them off. Second, you're gonna see when you squeeze them, you don't want a big gap between the nut, the fruit inside the shell and the shell itself. So when I push here, with my thumb, you're gonna see there really isn't a gap. So you don't wanna see them crack, you don't wanna see them splinter, you don't wanna see them dry, and they won't last that long. So when you grab some chestnuts and you put them on the counter, unless you put them in an area that's cool and moist, they'll actually dry out quite quickly and then they'll, they'll spoil on you. So in this case, we got a pound of chestnuts, they're fresh, and they've been rinsed, and I've gone through all of them, and they're in perfect order, they're in perfect shape. Next thing you're gonna need is about two, maybe three tablespoons of butter. Yes, butter, it's gonna be delicious. You're gonna need a cutting board. You're gonna need a sharp knife, French knife would be ideal. You're gonna need another bowl, because we're gonna, we're gonna hydrate the chestnuts in water before we cook them. You're gonna want a cast iron pan. You're certainly gonna want some tongs. And real quick, my opinion, when you look in Italy and you go along the streets of Italy, you're gonna see they use a hot pan. They typically don't roast them in an oven. I'm not saying that's wrong, but I've never had, and we're gonna have it right now, I've never had a chestnut more delicious in flavor than how I'm gonna show you how to cook it right now. These are gonna come out, they're gonna be tender, and they're gonna be flavorful, and we're gonna inject just a little extra sweetness and goodness to them, and again, they can be used in any fashion you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the stove. Another really important ingredient that we don't use in this recipe today, but it's certainly a, an important ingredient in Italian cooking is olive oil. So anybody new to our channel, I own a farm in Italy, it's right in Puglia, it's right above the heel. That's my smooth little plug-in, you guys like that? And the name of the olive oil is Vito and Joe's, it's extra virgin Italian olive oil. It's grassy, it's earthy, it's peppery, it's just delicious. We co-op with a whole group of farms in the area to bring you some of what I consider to be the best best extra virgin Italian olive oil you'll ever have. And I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, Joe, geez, I'd love to get some. I would love for you to get some too. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to my website, Cook an Italian with Joe, or my Facebook page, or my Instagram, and just go right on there, click buy it now, you can grab a large or small bottle of olive oil, or bottles, right, that's even better, and we'll drop ship it right to your front doorstep. And I always think of it as taking a, taking a trip to Italy right in a bottle. Enough talking, let's get cooking, let's start making some chestnuts. Simple, simple guys. You're you're gonna grab a chestnut, you're gonna notice in most cases, there's a flat side of the chestnut, see it? The reason there's a flat side, it's in, it's in its casing. So there's a pair of chestnuts in the casing, which has got thorns on it, it's really cool, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna typically see a flat side and you're gonna see a round side. So to make life simple, you're gonna put the flat side down, you're gonna grab a sharp knife and you wanna score this thing. Now I've seen it scored where you can go a plus, you can go across, I find if you go across, it's easier to peel. So you just wanna go across the top of the shell and you wanna score the shell. So simple, just draw your knife over on both sides. Take your time, play a little Christmas music. That's it, you're looking to go across it and then just try to come up on the sides. So there's one we just did, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and knock these off. And as I finish them, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in a bowl and I'm gonna fill this with water. Another way to do these, which I've used, is scissors. So it really depends on how hard the shell is. If the shells are a little softer, sometimes the scissors make it a little easier. Again, you're just looking to score it. Now the chestnuts are in the water and we're gonna let them soak for 20 minutes. What they're gonna do is they're gonna absorb moisture, obviously, and that's gonna hydrate the nut, get some water inside there. So when we cook them, that moisture will allow greater expansion and it allows the shell to come off really easy. An old school tip on this is you could put some flavor in the water. A lot of the old Italians, like the Nonos, okay, the guys, they must have been drinking one night and said, hey, if we add wine, so you can add red wine or 
or even white wine, but traditionally they would add wine rather than water and soak the chestnuts for like two to three hours in the wine and it would pick up some of the flavor of the wine. Some other tips would be to add something sweet. So you could add sugar or honey to the water and that would absorb into the nut and again that would make them a little sweeter. If you do any of those other techniques you're going to have to soak the chestnuts for about two to three hours to maximize that absorption uh, of that flavor that you're trying to infuse in the chestnut. One last tip that really makes these come out great is if you subscribe to the channel. <laughs> you like that transition? So hit that big black subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, hit the notification bell. That way it shares our, our recipes and our videos with other people looking for Italian cooking. And I'll tell you what, when you guys uh, when you guys subscribe to the channel, you know, you become part of the group, you become part of the community. Um, you'll, you'll get notifications of any trips we've got going on, blogging with Boreo, any recipes. We, get, we have a lot of activity going on on the farm. You'll get notifications on that, a lot of fun. And it really means the world to me when you subscribe. Makes you part of the, you know, the family, the cooking Italian with Joe Familia. Now guys, it's been about 20 minutes. I'm going to turn my burner on and I want it hot. So I want the inner and outer lining or you want a good medium to medium high heat if you're on gas. And now what I'm going to do is just take my chestnuts right out of the, right out of the water. I'm going to put them right in the pan. Now I'm going to do it when it's a little cool. That way it doesn't splatter up too much. What you're also going to do is add about a half a cup or more water right into your pan. Now you're going to put a lid over. It doesn't have to tight seal, but certainly you want it to seal to a certain degree. And now you're going to let the magic happen. We're going to go about 10, no more than 15 minutes. We're going to move these around about every two minutes once they start to bubble. And it shouldn't be more than 20 minutes to get a beautiful, delicious chestnut. It's been a couple of minutes. You can see some of these starting to split open right there already. You see that? So I'm going to let this go, like I said, for a good two to three minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. Give it a stir, make sure they're all flat. Oh, there's some aroma of chestnut already. Guys, we're almost there. I'm gonna open this up. See how we're almost out of water? So I'm not done yet, because they're not all open, so I'm gonna add a little bit more water. No worries, pop it right on there. Give it a stir. See how they're all starting to split open? But they're not all there yet. Some of them are, some of them aren't. So give them a center, give them a mix. You might have to do one more time. A couple of these guys are done, so I'm gonna just pull them out for a minute. We're gonna put them back in there. Now guys, all our chestnuts are done. I'm gonna go ahead and put them back in the pan. I'm gonna turn the heat down, low, medium, and now I'm gonna go ahead and add my butter. And let that butter melt, and then give them all a good stir. And now you can just shut the heat right off. You wanna get them all coated with that butter. You wanna get it in those little grooves, get them inside. Oh, that smells good. And now that they're all coated with butter, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plate them. Beautiful. Yeah, they open up perfect. Now they're too hot to eat, so you just gotta let them table cool here just for a little bit, maybe five to 10 minutes, but you definitely wanna eat them warm. So you're gonna grab three or four of them, smack the person in your little family who didn't cut them all the way or see they cut them all the way through. Those are losers in your family there. They need more training, but these are the perfect ones right here. Oh, those are gorgeous. Favorite time, eat time. So, so watch this now. These were toasted right in the pan. Watch, see how easy that comes off? I mean, literally just peels out. Absolutely perfect. And there's your chestnut. And yes, it is time to eat it. I wish I could share that with you right there. Okay, here you go. I will tell you, just that plate alone, you know, the aroma and that part of your brain, it just brings back your memories and it brings me right back to uh, Nona's house. You know, I'm waiting for her to come around the corner. Joey! <laughs> Mmm, that smells good. Mmm, absolutely perfect. Tender, sweet, it's nutty, it's butter. And then when you add that butter, it adds like a little bit of sweetness to it. And it's still warm. Mmm, I know what you're thinking. Hey, Joe, you're only going to have one now. I'm going to have another one. Look at that. See how it just comes out? It literally peels out. It's so easy. That one fell apart, so I had to eat the whole thing. Sorry. That's two down, 25 left to go. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me in my kitchen today for the aroma of Christmas right here in our kitchen or Thanksgiving for that matter. Now remember guys, hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up, hit the notification bell. Don't forget to hit our webpage, Cook in Italian with Joe, Facebook or Instagram. Grab you and your family some bottles of olive oil, Vito and Joe's. Love to ship you some extra virgin Italian olive oil from our farm right to your front doorstep. And guys, last but not least, and certainly some of my most important tips, once a month, a couple times a month, Month, get around the table with your family. Most importantly, I think not only celebrate your heritage, but set some traditions of love for you and your family. 
They're going to last your lifetime. I know they did for me. Hey, guys, from my kitchen to yours, until next week, mwah, bon appetito.